Dear ladies and gentlemen, I want to present you a talk about advances in fluorescence lifetime microscopy. This is part one, introduction. Most important fact about fluorescence lifetime imaging is that lifetime is a time measurement. Since time is an absolute measure, a flim measurement is independent of system settings and concentration. One application for flim are measurements for environmental parameters. Examples are measurements of hydrophobicity, pH value or ion concentrations like chloride or calcium ions. Another important application is the Förster Resonance Energy Transfer FRET. It allows to measure distances in a range of only a few nanometers. Lifetime FRET is in comparison to intensity FRET easier to calibrate and delivers more accurate results. Examples are binding studies or the study of protein folding or the study of moving of molecular motors is to name only a few. Fluorescence Correlation Spectroscopy FCS, can be used to study diffusion processes and sample concentration. The combination of fluorescence correlation spectroscopy together with lifetime leads to fluorescence lifetime correlation spectroscopy FLCS. It allows to obtain parameters with higher accuracy. In standard fluorescence microscopes you measure the fluorescence intensity, the emission wavelengths, and as additional parameters you could also measure the polarization and the fluorescence lifetime. A laser pulse is exciting an electron from the ground state into the excited state. There the electron remains until it decays back to the ground state by emitting a fluorescence photon. This photon is detected by a very sensitive photon detector. We are now simply measuring the time between the laser pulse and the arrival of the photon at the detector. For standard fluorescent dyes this time is in the range of some nanoseconds. The emission of a fluorescence photon is a statistical process. For example we are measuring for the first photon a start-stop time between the laser pulse and the arrival of the fluorescence photon of 3.4 nanoseconds. The next fluorescence photon arrives at a different time. In order to determine the fluorescence lifetime, many photons have to be detected. All these photons are now sorted into a histogram. As we see here, most photons arrive shortly after the laser pulse. And then the number of the photons decays exponentially. By fitting the histogram with an exponential decaying function, the fluorescence lifetime is determined. We are not only recording the start-stop times between the laser pulse and the photon detection but also the time between the start of the experiment and the arrival of a photon, the so-called time tag. In addition, external markers, saved also as time tags, allow to synchronize the data acquisition with image scanners. This TTTR data format is therefore collecting the complete measurement information. In order to measure a flim measurement with a laser scanning microscope, pulsed lasers of different colors are combined in a laser combiner. The pulsed light is guided through a single mode fiber to the microscope. There the fluorescence is excited in a sample. The fluorescence light is now delivered through a multimode fiber to a very sensitive single photon detector which creates a stop signal for the timing unit. This very fast stopwatch 
a time-correlated single photon counting unit, measures now the time between the laser pulse coming from the laser driver and the stop pulse coming from the photon detection unit. In addition, a synchronization signal coming from the microscope allows to reconstruct the FLIM images. Using the fast FLIM technique, the lifetime image is already displayed during data acquisition. For every pixel in the image, we calculate the start-stop times between laser paths and the arrival of the fluorescence photon, in this case 0.5 nanoseconds and 1.5 nanoseconds. The average lifetime, in this case 1 nanosecond, is displayed using this rainbow color from blue to red. The same process is performed for each pixel in the image, resulting in a flim image displaying the average lifetimes of the sample. We observe in this sample of a daisy pollen that already autofluorescence can deliver strong lifetime contrast. If we compare this fast flim analysis with a single exponential tail fitting procedure, we observe that the tail fit flim image exhibits more noise in its lifetime display. The obtained lifetimes, however, are comparable. The tail fit delivers more accurate results for very short lifetimes and complex dye mixtures. If we analyze a certain region of this daisy pollen, we find in the TCSPC histogram a B exponential decay, exhibiting two lifetimes of 0.8 and 2.4 nanoseconds. These two components either belong to a single or to two fluorescent molecules. The SymphoTime software contains all steps from FLIM and FCS data acquisition to analysis. On the left side, all measurements and their different analysis procedures are displayed in a tree view. In order to start a FLIM measurement, just press the record button and then start a scanning. The fast FLIM image is displayed during the image acquisition. In order to check the FLIM quality, the number of photons and the count rate of the brightest pixel are displayed. If enough photons are acquired, the record is stopped using the stop button. Now the fast FLIM image and the lifetime distribution are displayed. In the next step the lifetime fitting can be performed either at the selected regions with the region tools or pixel per pixel. The upgrade kit is available for all laser scanning microscopes of the major companies. It is installed by PicoQuant as a turnkey solution. The upgrade kit is very modular and can be easily adapted to special needs. The pulsed lasers with adaptable repetition rate can be combined in a laser combining unit. A broad range of lasers are available. The laser driver is software controlled. Different pulse sequences can be selected as pulsed interleaved excitation, PI, exhibiting a pulse train with alternating colors. As time resolved detectors, either PMTs or single photon counting avalanche diodes, SPUDs, are used. The SPUD achieves a detection efficiency of around 50% in the green wavelength range, together with an excellent timing performance down to 50 picoseconds at 670 nanometers. Thank you for your attention.